I want to talk to you today about why the evil in America cannot be stopped. Um, it seems as if uh, the evil just grows by the day and it gets worse and worse. And, you know, we pray about it. You know, Lord, please, you know, stop this. And, and Lord, please protect us. And, you know, and, and, but yet the evil just gets worse and worse. And you see things just falling apart. <clears throat> and, you know, we've trusted for how many years now that our politicians would save us and, and whatever. And, uh, you know, we'll elect this guy and we'll put a Republican in and that should take care of the problems. It doesn't. And we put uh, this guy in it. This politician looks like he's pretty good. Oh, no, he sold out. And you just see this and you think, okay, if there's a God, why is he allowing this to continue? I don't understand. I'm going to give you the answer today from the scriptures. I uh, thought I'd come out here and hopefully you can see some of these pretty wild flowers here behind me. The yellow ones are hawkweed and the, it's kind of the bright orange red ones that I think are a hawkweed uh, type as well. But uh, very beautiful flowers out here. And um, let's start out here in Amos chapter 3, back to the Old Testament. In the Minor Prophets, the book of Amos chapter 3 has a very interesting statement. In uh, verse 6, Amos chapter 3 verse 6 says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? So wait a second, no. This must be a mistranslation. No, it's what the Bible teaches. It's not a mistranslation. And again, watch out for that whole thing. You get people coming into the comments section and, well, the Greek word here is this and this and that, and you can get into this. And well, the Hebrew actually would better, be better translated, listen, okay? Um, you will never get anybody today that can come up with a better translation than what was done in 1611. They had all the manuscripts back then or all the uh, proper writings back then we have today. They didn't have the Sinaiticus. I realize that because that wasn't written until the 19, 19th century by uh, Constantine Simonides. But um, so they didn't have that one. And uh, but they did have. You know, Erasmus talked about the Vaticanus manuscript, and it was corrupt, and he didn't use it. Um, so that was there. And of course, there are some other Alexandrian type of readings, Gnostic readings, uh, Nox, Gnostic manuscripts. You know, where they were trying to rewrite the Bible. So that is true. They, you know, the King James translators didn't have access to all of the Gnostic writings because some were written after the King James Bible was completed. But they had the very best in their day and the very best of today as well. The vast majority of extant Greek manuscripts line up with the received text that underlies the King James Bible. Okay, so you get somebody coming along in the comments. They know better than, you know, 54 of the greatest scholars that ever lived. And, you know, the Bible, it's been tested and proven to be right over and over again for the last over 400 years now. Um, don't waste my time, okay? Uh, the King James Bible is correct in what it says here. There's, this is not a mistranslation. And if you understand, you read the whole Bible, you're saved, you're born again, the Holy Spirit of God will show you these things. And you'll realize why it says this. Shall there be evil in a city? Interesting, because that's where we see most of the evil happening. Not a whole lot of evil out here right now. I don't see many uh, pride parades or, or transgendered people or you know, stabbings or shootings or uh, drug dealings or whatever else. I don't see that out here. It's in the city. Interesting. Shall there be evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? In other words, um, if there's evil in the city, the Lord's the cause of it. So, uh, it doesn't make any sense. How could that work? It's... The same thing as a child that does wrong, they're going to get a spanking. They get a little swat for that. Um, you shouldn't have done that. You get a punishment. The uh, recruit in the military, they didn't follow orders. Drop and give me 10, 20, 50, whatever push-ups. There's punishment when you do wrong in any kind of a just system. I realize, of course, people are trying to overthrow that now, too. You shouldn't be punished, you know, whatever else, but they'll still punish other people. You know, uh, you shouldn't be punished for sodomite actions, but um, we'll punish people who speak against sodomite actions. We'll arrest them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not hate speech to come out and attack Christianity. That's fine. You can do that. That's just, you know, intellectual dialogue. But then if you attack their system, 
then it's wrong and it's hate speech and we have to censor this person and shut their channel down and whatever else. Uh, that's wickedness. Okay. If God was up in, is up in heaven and he's only allowed to do good things, how does that work? God has to punish evil. And God says, okay, one of the best ways to punish evil is actually to say, okay, go ahead. You see, here's the biblical truth that you are learning about here in the book of Amos chapter 3, verse 6. God is in control of everything. You can go back to the book of Job, chapter 1, chapter 2, read that. Satan comes before the Lord, in with all the holy angels there, the sons of God, and he has to present himself before the Lord. And God asks him, hey, what are you doing? Have you considered my servant Job? And the, Lord, and the devil says, oh, let me just attack, attack his stuff, then let me attack him, and he'll curse you to your face. And the Lord says, okay, you can do that, but just don't kill him and don't do this and don't do that. The Lord dictates everything, you see. You see, we have a God that created everything, and he's so powerful that he has to give permission to every little thing that happens out there. Doesn't mean he's for everything. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Um, the Lord looks down at, at Jerusalem, and he's weeping over Jerusalem, and he says, How often would I have gathered you, as a mother hen doth her chicks under her wings, and ye would not. He didn't say, and I ordained it that you couldn't. See, that's where Calvinism gets it all mixed up. They see some of this type of stuff, and they say, well, see, God creates, he ordains evil, he ordains good, he controls it all. Um, well, he does control it all, ultimately, but it was the devil that came up with the idea to attack Job, and God allowed him to do it. So God still gets the credit for it. God says, hey, you know, I allow that thing to happen to you, Job. But it was the devil that said, let me do this to him, and I gave the devil permission. Okay? So uh, why aren't we seeing an ending of the evil in the cities? And, you know, ultimately throughout most of America, why aren't we seeing an end of the evil? Because God is the one who's behind it. There's evil in a city and the Lord's the one that's doing it to punish this wicked nation. And I'll tell you right now, I watch a lot of stuff about economics and study things and read articles and, and uh, the stuff about war or World War III and whatever else. Um, but a lot of these guys, these analysts and things and economists or economists and whatever, a lot of them, they understand a lot in terms of calculations and figuring this out and figuring that out. And this is how this thing works and that. But they don't understand the judgment of God. They don't see the judgment of God. Hopefully we can put it into the CBDC thing and, and hopefully we can have this come back and we can do this and do that. Make America great again and all this. What about the judgment of God? Why didn't you mention the judgment of God? Why did you leave that out? Hmm. Because they're not spiritual. They don't understand these things. I can tell you right now what's going to happen to America. America is going to fall. Um, that's why you can't stop the evil that's going on in this country right now. The only way to stop it, the only way would be for the entire nation to repent before God. It's not going to happen. So a Christian, looking at what's going on, can look and say, it's not, oh, the devil's doing things and we can't stop the devil. God is in control. See, when you get right down to it, Amos chapter 3, verse 6 is actually a verse of comfort for a Christian. If there's evil in the city, it's not some other, you know, God that's an evil God and, and our God's up there going, oh, trying to fight him and trying to stop him. Our God's saying, yeah, I'll let that happen. I'm going to punish these wicked people. Hey, Satan, what do you want to do here? You want to do that? Uh, okay, you can do that, but you can't do these other things. Go ahead, make it happen. You want to go after their money system, the debt system, and have that collapse? Okay. You want to go after the health of the people? You want to go after other things? Okay, go ahead, do it. I give you my permission. Let there be evil in the city. Go ahead, Satan, I won't stop you. Okay? Another way you could say it would be sort of like the Lord's walking along and he's got a nasty dog on a leash and the dog is trying to bite people and the Lord just pulls back on the leash, pulls back on the leash and somebody starts making fun of the Lord and saying nasty things about the Lord. And the Lord reaches down and unhooks the dog and says, sick him. <laughs> the Lord didn't bite him, but he allowed the dog to go bite that guy. He's the one that released the dog. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. The 
the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. See, well, that's Old Testament. Well, let's give you a good one from the New Testament then. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Hmm. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the, the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of the unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And look at this, verse 11, one of the most amazing verses in the entire New Testament. And for this calls... People with the spirit of Antichrist, people going against the truth, people that have pleasure in unrighteousness. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Um, you know what happened in 2020? God sent them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. There were so many things that happened that God would have said, okay, I'll pull back my judgment. Hey, you're forced to stay at home. Um, start reading the Bible. Get on your knees and pray and say, God, please, please protect our nation. God, please. It would have been over. What did people do? One of the highest times of uh, online pornography being watched. I can't go into work. Let me see what I should do. I'll, I'll just sit around watching the adult film stuff and whatever else. Wickedness. What a bunch of sinners. A bunch of wicked people. There's supposedly this disease that's going around trying to infect people and whatever else. Um, you know, being very promiscuous in a time like that is not a good idea. People didn't care. So God says, okay, we'll keep it going. Um, hey, church is down there. You going to show the world that you can stay open when everybody else is being closed? Are you necessary? Oh, well, you know, we're not really that necessary. We can just be kind of closed down along with other businesses. Walmart can be open. McDonald's can be open. But the churches have to be closed. And God looks at that and he says, wickedness. I'll send you strong delusion. Go ahead and keep doing it. This thing could have been over in a month. But because people went along with it, nobody stood. Well, I shouldn't say nobody because I did. But a lot of people didn't stand against it. It continued for years. And look at all the horrible things that have happened as a result. Terrible. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks... Oway to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Do you believe the truth? Do you live by the truth? Do you walk in the truth? Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Stop there for a minute. I want to kick another little thing here quickly. The Catholics and the Orthodox and whatever other heretics out there, they'll say, see, there are traditions. Paul mentions traditions right there. Yeah, but it's been taught by word. In other words, what they're saying there to them, orally committed and things, or by our epistle. It still goes back to the scriptures. So you can't say, well, see, we've come up with traditions since then, the thing of nuns and celibate priests and, and monks and, and popes and, and whatever else. And so that's the, the tradition. See, so you know, you're saying that you add, you, Bible believers are mad at Catholics and, and Orthodox people because they add their traditions to the scriptures. And yet Paul says, so. that's, no, you look at the, actually compare what's being said there, you know, with what we understand from the scriptures. Uh, he's not saying, I'm okay with traditions that have been added to the scriptures. It's not what he's saying. He's saying the traditions that we have been taught to you by word, we've spoken them to you, or they're actually written into the epistles there. That's what it's talking about. It does not give um, freedom to be able to add to, you know, things with all these church traditions that they've come out with over the last, you know, almost 2,000 years. That stuff is nonsense. But, um... Let's continue reading here. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, 
which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. You know, it's a comfort to read the word of God and to understand the scriptures and to say, you know something? All this evil stuff that I see out there in the city right now, all these wild things that people are coming up with and, and you know, all the bizarre things that are going on, it's because God is judging this nation. My God is fully in control. God isn't in some little church building someplace, you know, a little altar in here he is or whatever, this guy, this Orthodox nut or whatever he is, uh, nut, and he's got this little cross. He says about God and he holds his little cross up, little thing. You know, that's not God. Okay, it's not God. God controls everything. He is completely in control. And if you're saved, if you're born again, then he can protect you no matter what the situation. Um, America's going to fall. America's going to fall hard, and I think it's going to be soon. And uh, I'm praying for it. I think it's going to be a glorious thing to see uh, this nation be brought down. Uh, what will be replacing it? I don't know. But America's beyond fixing at this point in time. I'm um, sorry to say that, but it is. I'm all for nationhood. I'm all for national boundaries and laws and things. You know, the Constitution was great. But uh, you know what? Um, America went too far. America was tolerant of sin. Uh, you can't be tolerant of sin. Sin is negative. Sin is destructive. You allow sin into your country and it becomes, it starts to go rampant and you have problems. You have big problems. So um, just wanted to put this little short study together. I think it's an important thing to keep that in mind. If you're newly saved, I've talked about this passage in other sermons, but if you're newly saved and haven't seen some of the older ones, um, you know, understand that God controls everything. Understand that when there's evil in a city, God is the one that's doing it as a way to punish the wicked heathen out there. Um, don't get afraid of what man can do to you. If you're not saved, uh, then you do need to be afraid of what man can do to you because you don't have God's protection. And you can perish in what evil comes into the city. Okay? So take my advice and um, study the scriptures, search the scriptures. Uh, uh, figure out what salvation is. Figure it out. You can watch me. You can watch my studies on it. You can watch other people. You can watch heretics. You can watch whatever you want. But it all has to go back to this. What do the scriptures say? That's the important thing. So that will be it. Thank you very much for watching.